Day four, we are here at the gym a little bit earlier than normal. It's about 6 a.m. now, so it's nice and quiet. We're ready to hit this workout. We're gonna be hitting shoulders, and we're gonna start out with some overhead press. Just getting a little warm up here with the band, some pass-throughs, kind of warm the shoulders up, some pull-aparts. You know, gotta wake those muscles up and make sure those joints are mobile. So, good thing is, get a band, do some pass-throughs, or just take the bar. Get some Bradford presses here, get a little nice rotation in the shoulder there. Warm it up and get ready for the heavier presses. With the overhead press, what you want to do throughout this exercise is remain vertical. You want to have your hands just maybe a little wider than shoulder width, feet placement the same. What you want to do is as you bring the bar up, you want to go ahead and take your head out of the way, seeing as you'll be going up in that straight line. And as you press it up over your head, you want to push your head forward. So you're basically going to be kind of bobbing your head out of the way during the exercise. You don't want to make the common mistake of leaning back while performing. So as you bring it up, you don't want to lean back. You want to just keep vertical, get that head out of the way, and then press through. All the way to the top position, nice and straight, your whole body almost like you're a little bit like in a Superman pose. Then you bring it back down to that starting position, resting right on the clavicle, and then rinse and repeat. So just like that. I mean, you know, you don't have to do the rage faces that I was doing, but it helps, okay? At least in my mind, it feels that it helps. All right, done with overhead press. Moving on to some single arm kettlebell press here. So we're working in that unilateral motion. Gonna concentrate on one side and then moving on to the next. You wanna get a wide stance, just like you did on the overhead press. Similar kind of mechanics and positioning. Of course, with this, you're not gonna have to worry about moving your head out of the way of the bar. Be grabbing the kettlebell here, just compress straight up. You're gonna really raise your center of gravity, so you're gonna have to balance in the core, much like the overhead press. Get a nice scoot to the top, and then just bring it down to that bottom position, in that secured position, where that forearm is gonna be in that vertical, vertical uh, placement. Yeah, you're in. Shit, you missed the tag team. Oh, my, I was too busy uh. filming the kettlebell. We even actually high five this time. We didn't yeah. miss. It was a special moment. Lost. Lost forever. Forever. Sweeney, so you gotta dig deep. Nine and nine and a quarter. Tag team. He's in. Yeah. Time to show you who's boss, kettlebell. Uh, or you might show me. Let's see. Uh, uh. Yeah. So we are moving on to the reverse upright row. And as opposed to the upright row, where it's going to be taking place in front of you, the bar is going to be behind. You're gonna be performing the same motion, but your range of motion is gonna be just a little bit limited. So don't feel that you have to bring it up basically all the way up across your back. Bring it just about so that your elbows are parallel with the floor. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to lean forward a little bit because those glutes are gonna be in the way, especially if you got a nice big ass. 
So tilt those hips forward, perform that reverse upright row. One of the main reasons and functions and why it's really concentrating on the posterior delts and traps is because you're actually working in shoulder extension. So you can tell the joint's coming back and it's gonna contract those posterior delts. Of course, this is flexion here. It's gonna work more of the anteriors. You're gonna bring that joint back here. Then it's going to put a lot of that stress on the posterior delts as well as the traps course. So uh, that's why I want, this is one of the better exercises, one of our favorites to really try to hit those posterior delts and also the traps at the same time because you're doing a slight shrug and get a nice squeeze those traps at the top and then put it down to that bottom position. The deltoitius from the Latin word delta. <laughs> Dropping some knowledge. <laughs> Each phase is three weeks. So we're on phase two, which, like all other phases, is gonna last three weeks. So what you wanna do, you'll be performing these exercises three different days. Remember to track it. Either use the log book in our 12 week plan or just grab a notebook and do it yourself. Because the whole goal of this is getting better, it's getting stronger, and you don't wanna just be stagnant using the same weights over and over and over again. So make it a goal, make it a goal even if it's two and a half pounds, even if it's five pounds. Somewhat so at least you're going up progressively as the weeks go on. Try to isolate those lateral deltoids. These guys right to the side while you're bringing them laterally to the body. What you want to do is concentrate on trying to lead with the elbows. See a lot of guys make the mistake by pulling their hands up first here, it's rotating upwards, put more stress on the anterior delt. So lead with those elbows, kind of act as your hands are kind of the hooks, your elbows are the ones doing most of the work. And you really want to keep that nice controlled motion, nice good smooth tempo, bring it up just a parallel to the floor and then right back down in eccentric contraction to the bottom position. Working on those boulders, shoulders, brother. Yeah, getting nice and big, ready to destroy. Yeah. <coughs> Clear your throat, damn it. So what we're going to be moving on to next is lateral races. <laughs> Wraps it up for shoulders. Pretty damn good workout, definitely feeling it. Shoulders are just about shot, but we're not finished yet because we're moving on to forearms. Speaking of that, I just loaded the bar up, ready for some reverse curls. Hitting the extensors of the forearm. Of course, you're getting a little bit in the bicep too, the uh, brachioradialis muscle. And uh, I guess that's what's having the gym partners all about. You know, helping each other out that way. Oh. How many reps is this? Twelve reps. <laughs> cool tip. So when you're doing the reverse curls, sometimes people have a habit of flaring their elbows out. And then it starts turning more of an upright row. Doing here, one, a couple reasons. One, it could be too heavy, and two, you could just need to work on form a bit. What you want to do is rotate so that way your inner arm is facing the mirror or facing away from you. So that way you'll get a more stricter movement. The elbows, it'll force the elbows to stay at your side and that way it's going to keep a lot of that tension in those extensors in the forearm and also a little bit in that radi radi brachioradialis there. So if you're flaring too much and you feel them here, you get more of a pulling motion where you want to rotate so that way the inner, the inner elbow is pointing forward, you'll feel concentrates a lot more on the muscles you're supposed to be hitting. Yeah. All we're missing now is the spinach. Finger curl.
curls. So last exercise. Ready? All right, we're done. Man, there's just certain muscle groups that you can just get a massive pump in. Calf raises, one of them. And uh, finger curls is another where you get so much blood in that muscle, you can barely move your fist. Like hard as a rock. That wraps up day four of phase two. We've got one final day left. It's gonna be legs and calves. Feels like we, again. <laughs> feels like we just worked those bastards, but we're gonna hit them again because hey, you want something to grow, you gotta keep hitting it. So this is gonna be weeks four through six, and tomorrow is gonna be the last day of phase two. So we'll see you then. Day five. Oh yeah, yeah. and as always, stay buff.